Welcome, fellow entrepreneurs, to the Amazon Sellers School Podcast, where we talk about Amazon Wholesale and how you can use it to build an e commerce empire, a side hustle, and anything in between. And now, your host, Todd Welch. What is your reasoning for going with VAs in the Philippines versus other locations? Yeah, it's a great question. So, I mean, first of all, there, there's great VAs all over the world. Um, I don't want to discount that. I mean, for, for me, if you're a new entrepreneur and you're trying to hire VAs for the first time, what you don't want to do is go out and hire two people from the Philippines, two people from Pakistan, two people from India. You're just adding a lot of extra work to your plate. There's different time zones, different cultures, different communication styles. You have to get them all to work together simultaneously. Like that's a bad way to approach it. For, for me, it's start with one place, master that. When you master it, sure, you can branch out. And Philippines is a great place to start. Um, they speak English at a high level. They consume a lot of the same media. Uh, they're used to working U.S. hours. They're used to working with U.S. clients. And there's a lot of stuff, stuff off of that. So it's a great place to start. Everything we teach at, at Outsource School we like works whether you're uh, – whether you're hiring people from the Philippines or, or wherever. Um, and for me personally, now I've just hired so many people from the Philippines. So I just have enough referrals from the Philippines that it just doesn't make sense for, for me to look anywhere else. Yeah. And I'm the same. I've, I've got, I believe, eight VAs right now and they're all from the Philippines and they're just really easy to work with. And like you said, when they're, when they're working together, when they have the same culture, it makes it easier on that side as well. So when people are looking for hiring a VA, what kind of things were you looking for at FreeUp? What, what made them the top 1%? Yeah, it's skill, attitude, and communication. That's a trifecta that we look for at FreeUp. It's the same thing that we look for in all our companies now. It's the process we teach people at, at our company, Outsource School, where we teach people our hiring process. Um, a lot of people, they just hire for skill, and then they get burned, and they're like, how did this person who's so talented not work out? And it's because they don't have the attitude or the communication to, to go with it. And we want people who obviously speak English, but can also get on the same page quickly. We don't want to chase people down or wondering what they're doing. And attitude, you want people who aren't just motivated by money, people who are positive, people who are a team player, people who put the business first and buy into what you're doing. And those things are, are so important to, to go with. Obviously, they have to have the skill that, that you need to, to work with them. Yeah. And I've, I found too, that it's really important to find people who offset your deficiencies right? Because like, for example, I'm very good at big picture thinking and thinking of awesome new ideas that I want to do. I'm not so good at doing all the little detailed things along the way. So hiring people who have high detail are really good for me to kind of help offset my lack of attention to detail. Yeah, I mean, that that's completely fair. I mean, you definitely want to hire people that, that support your um, your weaknesses, whatever they are, and we all have different ones. And that's a good activity too. I mean, my business partner and I do this all the time. Uh, we'll, we'll meet up and we'll say, hey, like, what are we doing now that we're not good at? Or what should we be doing that we're not good at? And what do we have to hire for? And what are we doing that we are good at? We know how to do it, but it's just a bad use of our time and we have to delegate it. Yeah, for sure. So what is the biggest mistakes that you've seen people make when hiring VAs that make it kind of be a failure? Yeah. So if you think of hiring into four parts, you've got interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing. Uh, where people go wrong a lot of times is the onboarding, the setting expectations. You, they, they might have a good interview and they get the person started, but we we call it our sick interview process, schedule, issues, communication, and culture. And we'll go through this with the VA before they start. We'll go through the schedule we need them to work, the common issues people have with VAs like power outages, internet outages, personal issues, computer issues, uh, making sure they have backups for everyone and that we won't put up with, hey, my computer broke, I can't work for a month. We go through our communication styles, what tools we use, what happens if your power goes out, how do you contact us? And then we go through just the overall culture in our business. So those are that's where people go wrong. Spend 20 minutes before you start with the VA setting expectations and give them a chance to back out because you'd much rather they back out saying, hey, your expectation is too high. This isn't the right fit. It's not what I'm looking for. Then, then, have this, then find that out two months after training them. 
Yeah, for sure. And in the beginning, I was definitely guilty of, you know, bringing someone on and then you get all eager to start training them in the beginning. And then that very quickly becomes tedious. And then you, they just, you kind of let them do things on their own. And that goes downhill really fast. So I learned that the hard way in the beginning. Exactly. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.